Good afternoon, Atlanta Music Project young musicians and friends. I'm Avril, and I'm happy to welcome you to another edition of AMP Online Masterclasses, sponsored by the Chestnut <clears throat> Family Foundation. This class is clarinet fundamentals taught by uh, Mr. Enrique Salcedo. Um, and we invite you to participate by playing along at home and by answering questions in the chat. If you'd like, you can also have your video shown to demonstrate a concept as we go through the class. <coughs> Let's get started. All right, Mr. Ricky, and you can take it away, sir. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, as April said, I'm Ricky Salcedo, a clarinet teaching artist at the Atlanta Music Project. And today we're going to be talking about fundamentals and warm ups. Uh, we're going to get really into um, the intricacies of like, what's going on inside your mouth, um, the internal cavity, breathing, embouchure, um, and really get specific. Some things you may have already heard, but some things maybe not, because they're really, 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 really um, particular. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping you guys have your clarinet, uh, pencil, paper, for you guys to like write down notes. Um, and actually a mirror, if you have one, like close by, or just a handheld mirror, just so you can like see your embouchure. Um, if not, you know, it's fine. You can maybe like look in the camera or whatever, your reflection. Um, so yeah. So first we're gonna start off with breathing. Um, and so, um, and, and excellent, Mr. Ricky, I'm just learning. Um, so all of those things will just, a, a brief pause and while I speak. Make sure that you have all of those things, something to take notes with. Um, if you need a second, go ahead and get your clarinet out, um, <laughs> assemble it, um, and just be prepared to, um, while Mr. Ricky may be demonstrating some things, you all will be on mute. So go ahead and be practicing at home along with um, anything that you see that Mr. Ricky covered. <laughs> and then we will be calling on um, people to demonstrate. Um, and this is so that Mr. Ricky can offer some advice on how to improve your playing. So Mr. Ricky may uh, come to you and, and give you some feedback just to make you a better musician. All right, so hopefully everyone has gathered their materials. Um, and Mr. Ricky, go ahead, please. Sweet, thank you. Um, yeah, so now that we all have our clarinets together or putting them together, um, let's talk about breathing. Um, so whenever you start um, any practice session, it's really good to think about breathing. Obviously air, that's what makes the sound. Um, that's why it's called the wind instrument. It's really important to utilize your air um, and I really like using this exercise just because it gets your um, abdomen, diaphragm, ab muscles kind of working. Um, and it's kind of, playing clarinet is a little bit like of a workout. Um, I mean, playing any wind instrument is, but for me, I think clarinet is like super. You have to have some ab muscles and, you know, it's just a workout. So you really have to utilize and like work this and start it off every day before you practice. So at home, you can do this along with me. Um, this is called the um, just snake breathing. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in air for four slow beats. And when you breathe in, um, what you wanna think about is breathing in deep breaths and just opening up your throat and relaxing your shoulders. And then when you excel, the only thing that really has to flex or support um, is your diaphragm, your core, um, your abs, all those muscles down here, um, but nothing really up here. This should all stay super relaxed. And that's probably the most challenging because when you are trying to like blow fast air, this usually you know, tends to tense up uh, your throat kind of closes up sometimes. So just make sure when you breathe in, there are two analogies I like to do. When you breathe in and take a deep breath, one is like, just say you're outside and you're playing, um, it's super hot, you've been outside for like two hours, a hike, whatever you wanna do, play playground, cartwheels, gymnastics. Um, sun's really hot, you're super hot, you want a glass of water, you go inside um, and you get like a big glass of ice water and like you drink it 
and you've been so hot and you can literally feel the water like go down your throat, down your esophagus, and you can feel it like hit your stomach. And that's kind of what you want to think about when you breathe in, you kind of drink the air down to your stomach. Um, because a lot of people just tend to take shallow breaths and they just kind of reach here. So really think of opening it up and just swallowing the air. Or you can think about it, my favorite is just like you're about to yawn. So <clears throat> you guys are probably all about to yawn at home, but when you take a breath right before you yawn, what happens, right? So you go, <sighs> right? All this kind of opens up and it kind of relaxes and everything just opens up, your mouth, your throat, all of that. And you tend to take a deeper breath down and this relax. So when you breathe in, that's a good way to think about it. Just like you're about to yawn, right? So what we're gonna do is breathe in for four slow counts. And this is a good exercise to do before you start like any kind of warm up um, on your instrument get the abs working especially like when you wake up in the morning you want to practice at like 9 a.m and your body's still like what day is it like i don't know what i'm doing um this is a good way to like wake up your body physically so you're going to take in four slow beats as you're swallowing the air drinking it or like you're yawning and then you're going to want to exhale and get rid of all of your air as fast as you can through your teeth um and it's going to sound kind of like a snake like um, but the point is you want to do it as fast as possible, but there are a few things that you want to try to avoid. Um, obviously like when you're trying to blow out all the air through your teeth, your nat the natural tendency is for your body to tighten up, especially up here. So make sure that doesn't happen. Um, and just always make sure that you keep good posture. And when you're getting rid of that last amount of air in your lungs make sure you don't kind of like and you lean over um just try to like stay up and keep this open and relaxed and just blow it all out and the only thing working and getting like i don't even want to say tense but just kind of support you're flexing your core is everything down here nothing up here so we're going to breathe in for four long beats and then we're going to exhale and blow out all of our air through our teeth, right? Put your teeth together. <clears throat> and then as fast as you can. Um, and then we're going to do that about three times. Just make sure you sit up and you should really start to feel your abs working. All right, so here we go. Yep, so go, go ahead and do these along at home. Yeah, so we're going to go ready and... And then do it again. And if you want, if you're not sure if like you're working the right stomach, core, or diaphragm muscles, you can also, another trick is you can kind of elevate your feet off the ground just a little bit. And what that does, it, that kind of like works your lower abs and your core, and that kind of makes them contract. Um, and it kind of helps you sit up better. So you can try that as well. So two more times, ready, and. And get rid of all the air as fast as you can. Yeah, and just make sure you don't tense up and close up your throat. Um, and no crazy faces. Because if you like tighten up your faces, you'd be surprised like what else tightens up without you knowing. Um, so keep all of this super, super relaxed and just really work your abs. Um, so that's a good way to open up, um, to wake up your muscles down there and also just your whole body because you're breathing. Um, and then if you like to like work out or you're like a physical type, you can do crunches or whatever and then do like the breathing exercises. So it's up to you. <clears throat> So once we do that a few times, um, that, that's a good thing to do before you actually start playing the clarinet. So we got our air going um, and our abs are working, posture's good, everything's kind of open up, opening up and we got that feeling of 
like you breathe in, like you're about to yawn, all of that stuff. And so now we're going to talk about um, embouchure. So embouchure, I don't ever really like to use the word tight or um, like tight corners. Tight is a very bad word. Um, I like to use firm. So with embouchure, I like to think of firm lips up against your teeth, right? Like if you just kind of like plaster your lips up against your teeth, right? And you say, ooh, basically naturally your lips will be all up against your teeth, right? And the most important is the bottom lip should go over the bottom uh, teeth, right? Just the fleshy part, right? You don't want too much bottom lip in, um, but you don't want it out, right? So that can give you like a, a, an abrasive kind of sound if it's too far out. And then if it's too far in, there's just so much lip um, on the reed and it won't let the reed vibrate. So it kind of has that kind of like dead muffled sound. So just the fleshy part here and then, ooh, right? So as long as your lips are firm up against your teeth and it's almost kind of like um, if you were to imitate someone without teeth, right? Like how would, you would like, I have no teeth, right? So like your lips naturally just go firm up against your teeth. That's another way of um, doing it, but just make sure you still have that ooh with your corners, right? Because if you just think that, it's too horizontal. <clears throat> and so if you think ooh, that kind of opens you up vertically, right? Here and then ooh. And that also like opens your jaw a little bit and that helps with the whole um, opening up your throat and keeping this relaxed, right? We want everything open. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we have our embouchure, right? Firm lips up against your teeth. Let me try to get closer, right? Ooh, like that. Firm lips up against your teeth, ooh. Um, and then, yeah, so that's basically um, the embouchure for the clarinet, the main things. So what we're gonna do next is do the breathing exercises with the embouchure, right? So the same thing, we're gonna uh, blow in for four beats and we're gonna blow out, right? So all we're thinking about right now is air. And I'm sure you've heard um, from teachers or uh, other musicians or whatever, you know, oh, when you play clarinet, it's a lot of fast air. So think about like blowing out birthday candles from far away or, you know, blowing through the clarinet, like blowing through the bell. Um, that's all good, that's great. That, that you know, it inspires you to like, you know, blow fast air um, or more air, um, which is all good. So, but in a, in a few minutes, you'll, re, you'll notice uh, the difference in that when we change stuff inside our mouths. So for right now, just think about the breathing, working the stomach, and then forming the embouchure, right? So it's gonna go, you're gonna breathe in for four and out. You're just gonna blow like you're blowing, you know, something from far away you're trying to aim um, with the ooh embouchure, right? So you're gonna go, ready? Right, if you do that a few times, that also kind of also wakes up the corners, um, which is also good um, because these little tiny muscles that we have in our corners and the muscles we use to form the embouchure, um, we really don't ever use those unless you're playing clarinet. So when you first wake up in the morning or early in the, you know, early in the morning, like the, they're kind of still sleeping. So you kind of have to wake them up. So that's another good way to open that uh, and to wake those up. So. If you do that after a few times, you can get the embouchure, it's a little warmed up and your air is going, all right? So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the tongue position. This is probably the most important aspect of playing. Um, so when you think about the tongue inside your mouth, right? A lot of people just don't really think about it. Just kind of like blow air. Like if you blow out birthday candles, your tongue is just kind of like dead in your mouth. It's usually kind of just like laying there in your, in your mouth, not doing anything. But you actually have to 
raise your tone, like the entire time you're playing clarinet. Even if you're playing the low range to the high range, um, it's always that arched tongue. And you wanna actually try to say the syllable E when you play. And if you say E, you notice that the kind of like the middle back of your tongue kind of caresses or kind of touches the top molars a little bit. E, right? And what that does is if it's arched, like an example, like airplanes, right? Like the airplane wings, they're designed with like the arch and that's how they lift off. So like when you're going and it's arched, the air hits, goes over the wing, it speeds up the air and then it lifts off, right? So, and that's how it works because the air speeds up going over um, the arched wing. Um, I think that's a Newton's third law. So there's a little bit of physics you didn't think you would get. Um, so yeah, so air hits arch and it speeds up and then it lifts the plane. Same thing for clarinet. So if you just blow the same amount of air, it's naturally going to speed up if you arch your tongue. Um, and you can kind of do two things to prove it. So number one, if you just kind of want to blow um, air at your hand, form the armature, and just don't even think about your tongue, just blow air. And then if you blow again with the E tongue, you'll notice that A, it sounds different. It sounds like I'm blowing a lot more air, but I'm not. It's just naturally speeds up the air. So it's gonna make a higher pitch sound. And you'll notice, you, you'll feel that the air stream goes from like this and it kind of condenses. So it not only like speeds up your air, but it kind of focuses your air. So if you go from to right, and you can instantly hear it. So if you do it at home, do that a couple of times and you'll hear it, right? You don't want to get too tight though. You don't want to like, like don't raise your tongue too much where it like uh, closes your mouth or it like kind of closes your throat. Just a gentle E and it just it should just sound like that, right? And so when you're blowing that, make sure this is still, don't do anything funny here, right? We're just talking about the tongue. This should stay really, really open, all right? So yeah. So now we could just do four beats in and then out and practice keeping super open here. Make sure our tongue is up in the E position and try to hear it, listen up for that sound, all right? Hey, and uh, Mr. Ricky, just to recap what we've discussed um, up to this point um, and, and for our pacing too, so to give you a second yeah. as well. So we've talked about breathing um, and students and you all are, are practicing along as well. We've talked about embouchure, we've talked about tongue placement. Um, and so um, we've got a few students that are, that are participating, that are here. Um, and just a heads up to you all, we may get to a point um, pretty soon where I'm gonna, I'll share screen and share video. And Mr. Ricky's got some exercises that you all can play along to as well. And Mr. Ricky will also offer some feedback. Okay, I'm, a, I'm throwing it back to you. Thank Mr. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Avril. Um, yeah, so just to prove, and then the fast air that you wanna use, you use that kind of same air from the lowest notes to the highest notes to the clarinet. And that's a big misconception that people have. Like the lower the notes, oh, you have to like open up and like, you know, blow fatter air or whatever. Like no matter what, how high, how low you go, you always want to play. So I'm not changing anything. And that's the low E and then the altissimo E. And I'm not changing anything and it's super easy. As long as I'm playing the low E with the super fast air, the E is gonna naturally just come out like butter. Um, just moving your fingers, that's the only thing. Yeah, the you just move your fingers, finger. that's finger. all, right? And okay. as long as you just keep this engaged, right? And keep this engaged, like your, the whole, the tone through the lowest notes to the high notes should be super homogenous, 
your tone should have that spin, that beautiful ping all through the registers, um, as long as you just maintain that really fast air and the high tongue. So that's why the tongue position is the most important, one of the most important, I don't say the most important, one of the most important aspects of clarinet playing. Um, so yeah, so as I demonstrated, it, you know, it's super, 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 super important. So next we're gonna do, we're gonna yeah. talk about, so after we do the breathing exercises, um, this is more, I'm kind of gonna split for our more kind of like advanced players and then some of our, you know, if you're just starting out playing clarinets for a year or two years or whatever. So a good way. Yeah, we, got, um, we got Sierra, Shari, Leia, uh, Naomi and Kevin here um today as well sweet yeah yeah so for you guys who um are really good you can play altissimo notes for days really 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 high right in order to get those out you have to use fast air your embouchure has to be on point like we just discussed so after you do like the breathing exercises and you get all your stomach muscles and diaphragm and you're open and relaxed sometimes what i like to do before i even do like my long tones, which we we're going to discuss in a second, is just kind of whip out like high notes, right? So just and just just really blow through it. Um, don't really worry about if it's like pretty or beautiful or whatever. Just like blow through it. Make sure your tongue is in the high position and make sure you get the pitches out. Um, and then that kind of just works and wakes everything up. Um, and maybe like people around you in the neighborhood because it's really, really loud. But yeah, just kind of like, it just kind of wakes everything up. So after that, then I know that like my air is good. It's fast. I'm starting to feel it. My embouchure is kind of warmed up. Um, and then we start with uh, long tones. So before we get to long tones, um, I want to talk about one more thing um, that I'm kind of like really OCD about, but it makes sense. Um, so before you start playing, before you did all the physical stuff, body's ready to play clarinet, um, let's talk about reeds for a second. Um, we could talk about reeds for hours and hours and hours, but just like a, like a little um, tidbit on reeds. So obviously reed is what the reed is what makes the sound, right? Like for vocalists, you use your vocal cords, um, trumpets, the mouthpiece, and the buzzing. I'm not really a brass player, but like, you know, like we all have our things. For the clarinet, yes, you have a mouthpiece, but the reed is what makes the sound. Like if there was no reed, we could have a mouthpiece and nothing would come out. So if you have a bad reed, <clears throat> or if your reed is not working, um, if it's placed too high on the mouthpiece, if it's placed too low on the mouthpiece, if it's crooked, if it's warped, which we'll talk about what warped is in a second. If there's anything like wrong with the reed, um, it's not wet enough, tooth or whatever, like you're not going to sound good, right? So you have to make sure that you are um, treating your reeds well and you are placing them on the mouthpiece correctly. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about reeds really quick. So I have, I'm gonna take mine off really quick. So <clears throat> what I like to do is, yeah, you can put it in your mouth, like um, get it wet, but um, the best way to do it is if you can't carry, I mean, obviously not everyone can carry like a small little like glad to go container with water everywhere you go. Um, but since we're all at home, <laughs> um, we can just get like a coffee mug, um, a little cup or anything you want just fill it up with water and just kind of like toss it around a little bit and then just gently kind of just like rub it with your fingers and make and let the fibers in the reed absorb the water and just make sure that it's wet enough um and then when i talk about warped so warping of the reed is basically like if you put a reed on your mouthpiece um and you look at it like from this angle, like into it, the reed should be completely straight, right? But if it's warped, it kind of looks like a potato chip, like a Ruffles potato chip. It has kind of like the waves in it. And you don't have to flatten those out. Because if you don't flatten them out, obviously the reed's not going to vibrate because it has to be completely straight and balanced to vibrate. So 
to fix that is right dip it in water or in your mouth if you don't want to get up and run it under the sink or the water fountain and then what you want to do is on the face of the mouthpiece this little part just gently put the tip on the mouthpiece like that and then just kind of like let me press your thumb over it not too hard and just you know just for a few seconds flatten it out a little bit turn it around do the same thing wet it again do that and then that should eventually over like 45 seconds should flatten out the warpness of it um and that should fix that um so another thing about reeds uh just making sure that you put the reed on the mouthpiece um correctly right so you don't really want the mouthpiece the reed to go above the mouthpiece and you don't want it too low like if it's too low it's really easy to see because you'll just see a lot of black at the very very top right and if it's too high you can kind of see if you look at it from the side like it's higher than the mouth than the mouthpiece that'll make it like really hard to play and if it's too low it won't vibrate the sound will be a little edgy and you'll get a lot of um, squeaks or whatever. So you kind of want the reed to just fit perfectly and lined up right to the tip of the mouthpiece, right? Um, and then you also want straight up and down. Like you don't want it curved anyway. Um, and just make sure the bottom of the reed, most mouthpieces have like these two lines. I don't know if you can see, this is such an old mouthpiece. They have the two lines, like if you kind of like put the reed where it's perfectly in the middle of that, um, that'll be the best, right? And once it's perfectly straight and on the mouthpiece, it should vibrate to the max, right? And that's what we want. We want the reed um, in the perfect position for it to work the best it could possibly work, especially when the reed's not that great. Um, we don't want it to make it worse by like putting it on crookedly or anything. So, yeah, so reeds are very important. Um, and we can talk tons about reeds, but not right now, how to break them in and stuff like that. But that's the most important. Keep them wet, put them on correctly, straight up and down, all of that. So once we hey, have... Mr. Ricky, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Let's, let's take sure. the remainder um, of our time and get as much interaction um, from, from the students as possible. Um, okay. So let's condense uh, all of the wealth of information that, that you have um, yeah. into a, a form where we can get um, Sierra, Shari, Sierra, Shari, Leia, Naomi, and Kevin um, to okay. be able to interact with us. Beautiful. Okay. So then we'll skip, go ahead and skip to long tones. Um, so what I like to do is this long tone exercise. Um, it's by David, David uh, Weber. Um, it's basically you start on the low E. Do you mind, Mr. Abril, sharing the long tone? There you go. Yeah. So basically, you can do this as written. You can start pianissimo to forte to forte and then end on pianissimo, or you can play everything forte. I recommend to start off just playing everything at a nice mezzo forte. Um, don't try to like start off pianissimo first. But the goal is to think about um, everything that we just talked about and then listen for smoothness, your tone, um, and all of those things, right? And you wanna play them as slow as possible just to kind of like also push your air stream and your air supply. So you wanna go. And a good way to spot check is if you're in the middle. You can kind of just pop up to an altissimo note. And if it pops up really easily, that means that your air is good. So you just think about your air being at that rate when you do the long tones. <clears throat> so we, um, so we can we get quickly, yeah, get a student, whoever wants to volunteer. Charity. Wait, who would like to volunteer? I think you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, he was. 
Let's start with uh, did you uh, with uh, Shari first. Shari, yeah, okay. So Shari, if you want to do just start at the beginning, a nice mezzo forte, pink embouchure, air, all of that. Good, good, good. So can you do that one more time? The sound is very, very nice. Think about the angle of the clarinet, make sure this is all engaged and play it a little slower. And just really feel all the fingers, make sure everything's uh, smooth and your fingers are close to the keys. Good. And you always want to end each fermata kind of taper, like hold it out and to the very, very end and then start the next measure. That was really good. Yeah. So that's the good warm up. So you, you should always do these kind of, thank you, Shari. Um, you should always do these long tones anytime you have a chance to practice, right? These long tones aren't the most fun, but if you play them for like two minutes, but you're focused and you're listening for all the things we talked about, um, it can do so much for you, but make sure you do this every single time you practice. No matter if you have like 15 minutes to practice, do this first and then do the rest for the other 13, 14 minutes. All right. So, all right. So let's speed ahead then. So we have tonguing, everything, everything's on point. We're air. So now let's talk about um, articulation, right? So we're going to kind of rush a little bit just so we don't run out of time. Uh, articulation, tonguing, right? So that's one of the things that um, a lot of clarinets have trouble with. It's kind of like, it's hard to reverse. A lot of clarinets are tonguing incorrectly when they first start playing the clarinet. So a good way, so after you're warmed up and your tongue is in the E position, it's already naturally forward in your mouth, right? It's already kind of here. And you kind of just want to move the tip of your tongue and not your whole tongue, right? And it doesn't take that much to tongue the clarinet, right? You literally just have to like gently caress it to stop the sound. Um, so Mr. Averill, do you mind going to the scale sheet? We're gonna do a little exercise with the scale sheet. Certainly, and that's the one with the four major scales, right? Yeah. <clears throat> So who's all on? Sierra, Shari, Aaron, Naomi. And also um, Leia and Kevin. Leia and Kevin. And thank you all, everyone, for tuning in, by the way. Good to see you, Naomi. It's been a minute. I know. We are going to have summer series, um, I think, right. maybe. Um, can everyone see the scales? I can, yeah. So really quickly, so a good way to... Um, and, and Mr. Ricky, uh, something to think about. Um, also, someone... Uh, Mr. Ricky, can you hear me? You're going in and out. Okay, well, go ahead, it's okay. Oh. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna do, um, let's start with the F scale, F major, um, E flat concert, um, but F for clarinets. So after we've done the long tones, you can kind of just and just really think about your air and blow through that scale and think about how the air is just kind of nonstop. It's fast, the embouchure, everything's engaged, right? So when we talk about tonguing, a good way to start tonguing um, in your, the beginning of your practice session 
this is legato. You never really want to start with staccato tongue because that's a little harder and you can kind of like do funny things with your throat and your mouth. So a good exercise that I like to do um, with students and also helps me too, um, is kind of do half note, quarter, quarter, half note, quarter, quarter. And you want to do it very low. You don't stop your air and it's as if you're holding out the notes and every, nothing changes. So it sounds like... <laughs> Right? Everything's engaged, my air doesn't stop, and my tongue is already arched in the front of my mouth and it's just kind of gently brushing the tip of the reed, right? Tip of the tongue, tip of the reed. Um, and that's another misconception. Don't think tip of the reed is the actual tip, right? So the tip of the reed should be kind of like this. If you guys can see the pencil marking, yeah, so like the actual tip, but not the tip, right? A little high on the reed. That's what it means when they say tip of the tongue, tip of the reed. Um, so does anybody want to demonstrate that really quick before we go into more of short, shorter tonguing? Um, hey, can you hear me, Mr. Ricky? Yep, I can hear you. Great. Um, how about, um, Naomi, would you like to give it a shot? Yeah. Perfect. So actually you can pick any scale you want. You can do F scale, B flat, but just half note, quarter, quarter, half note, quarter, quarter. Is that right? Good. You were going in and out, but from what I heard and from what I see, it's good. Like I didn't see any like movement, like um, I didn't see any. Right, everything was kind of still and you were engaged. And from the notes that were audible, that was really, really good, right? You just move the tip of the tongue and keep that air constant. Yeah, that was really, really good. All right. so. Let's move on to, now that our tongue, at this point, our tongue should be in good shape. It's in the front of your mouth, right? And it's just gently hitting the reed. Now we can do something called um, stop tonguing. And this is a little advanced, um, but it's good for um, lining up your fingers and your tongue. Like if you're playing something and you have to like tongue um, a fast scale, right? It's good for that. Um, and it's also good to get when you're practicing um, to make sure your tongue is doing the same thing, the correct thing, and your air is completely just always coming. It's like a water hose, right? And the water is always waiting. And then what stops the sound is your tongue, not your air. So what I like to do, I think this is the David Bernard finger exercise. I'm not, I don't remember. I learned in undergrad. Um, but basically, the air doesn't stop and you play. So you make the sound, you stop the sound with your tongue and then you go to the next note. You stop the sound with your tongue, you go to the next note. But everything is always engaged and it never, never stops. So. <laughs> Right? So it's, if you kind of see. And then, but my, my air doesn't stop and the tongue just kind of gently hits the tip of the reed to make, uh, to stop the sound. So anybody want to try that and volunteer? Hey, um, Mr. Ricky, we'll get yeah. that volunteer also. And I want to throw this out here um, as well to think about um, because it appears that we have an audience um, outside of the students that are on the gallery view that um, are interested in clarinet information. Um, 
Yeah. And, and they seem to be doublers. Um, so for students that may play um, oboe or saxophone, um, how would you right. compare the embouchure, um, the, the different embouchures? Um, and you can yeah. kind of um, marinate on it, or if you want to answer it now as we uh, go, go on to our next participant. And we also want to say thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can totally answer that right now. Before I do, well, yeah, I'll, I'll answer it first. So I'm also a doubler. I play flute. Um, I try not to play saxophone too much because it kind of messes up my clarinet playing. Um, but yeah, there are differences. Um, obviously, flute and clarinet, the fingerings are kind of similar. But in regards to what's happening up here in your air, um, all the instruments require lots of air, right? You just have to like exhale it differently, right? The clarinet is fast air, the flute, not so much. Um, but like embouchure wise, obviously the clarinet's very firm. Um, the flute, right? You kind of just want to relax and open. Everything is completely opposite. You want a lot of air and you kind of want to just kind of not do much, right? Kind of like keep your corners, but just really, really, really relax, lots of air. Um, it's kind of like a whole different ball game when it comes to embouchure with clarinet and flute. Um, I know for saxophone, um, that requires kind of not such a high tongue or fast air, maybe in the higher range, but obviously to get the lower notes in the, on the saxophone, you really kind of have to think ooh or like oh, um, which you do not want to do for clarinet ever. Um, so I know that is probably the biggest difference. So. But I think it pretty much requires the same kind of embouchure, physicality, like the exterior um, for clarinet and saxophone, right? Flat chin, firm lips up against your teeth, like corners in, kind of like a drawstring. Um, but as far as air usage, I think it's a little different in different ranges um, for saxophone. For clarinet, you fast air, high tongue, from low E to high, high C. Um, and for saxophones, I know, like, you know, you really have to, like, get down there for the low range. Um, so right. I think that's probably the biggest difference for saxophone and clarinet. Hey, um, Rain, clarinet. would you like to, Rain, did you want to play one of the exercises? The, the, um, did you want to demonstrate? And if not, um, Kevin, did you want to demonstrate? Kevin, if you wanted to demonstrate the stop tonguing, that'd be good. And the thing to think about when you do this exercise is stop tonguing where your air is always just waiting and you're kind of stopping the air with your tongue. An easy thing that you may fall into is you get super tense. You never want to go and get really, really tight because your air is always like you're blowing and you never want to get really tight in the chest. So just always make sure that this is open even when you feel your abs and your core really, really working when you're doing any stop tonguing. Um, and let's go with Sierra. Yeah. Let's, let's um, go with Sierra instead. It looks like um, Kevin is not available at the moment. Okay, yeah, Sierra, do you want to demonstrate? You can just pick a scale okay. and just go for it. Good, good job. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. So yeah, so what about that is the tonguing was, was great. I could hear that your tongue was placed correctly, um, but you, every note, you breathed in a little bit and you kind of want to just make sure that your air doesn't ever stop, right? You never want to waver your air. But aside from that, I could tell like your embouchure was great and your tongue was 
gently hitting the reed. Um, just make sure your air just never stops and you're always just kind of working your core. Um, well, Mr. Ricky. So yeah, so I think we're out of time. Are we we out are. Of time? <laughs> yeah, we're out of time. We really appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, and Mr. Rick, if you would just take a quick 30 seconds and just summarize everything um, that the kids can be working on in their um, practice sessions as they move forward. And once again, thank you all for tuning in and thank you all for also demonstrating. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So to summarize, um, just make sure, embouchure, right? Firm, ooh. Like the outside is ooh, the inside is e, right? And just always stay open and relaxed. Make sure you're always, no matter what you, even if you're practicing and you're trying to like noodle, try to figure something out and like you're kind of hunched over and you're trying to like work something out, just always make sure that you're always playing with support, um, sit up, um, embouchure, tongue, and then always listen, always be listening. Because when you practice, you could get a lot more done in five minutes than in two hours. If those five minutes you're super engaged and focused and listening and making sure everything's good, you can get more done in like five, 10 minutes than you could in two hours of just kind of like, well, oh, just noodling and not really thinking and just playing. So just always be in tune um, what you want to sound like and just think about all these little fundamental aspects. Um, warm up every day. Eat your vegetables. You have to warm up every day, no matter um, how much time you have to practice. Um, and yeah, those are the main things. Thank you so much for joining today. All right, thank you, Mr. Ricky. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, you all have a wonderful day. All right.